Alexander pours the contents of the oracle's vial into the hunter's lamp with the baby's tears. The vial, now empty of its sacred fluid, disintegrates. Alexander fills the hunter's lamp to the brim with the fountain water. Alexander prepares to enchant the hunter's lamp with the Make Rain spell incantation. Clouds of thunder, shafts of light, come and sup with me tonight. Waters three have I for tea, brew a tempest now for me. The lamp in Alexander's hand gives a little perk. He hopes the spell works despite his makeshift teapot. Alexander pulls out his magic map. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. Great gods, did you see that? The man just appeared from nowhere. Perhaps he was sent by the spirits. I see no boat. He is an intruder, no matter how he got here. Grab him! Not again. Look, I'll leave. It's no problem. I think not. Let's go. Alexander is frozen at the spectacle before him. Robed figures are gathered around a bonfire. Some mystical ceremony is taking place. But as to its purpose, Alexander has no clue. We found a trespasser on the beach, Archdruid. Uh-oh. Archdruid. Now what has Alexander wandered into? This must be the foreigner we were warned about. How appropriate that he should come during our rain festival. Place him in the sacrificial cage. Wait! I must rescue the princess! There's an ancient druid saying, a man who would save others must first save himself. Alexander is pushed into the confining wicker cage. And the cage is swung out over the bonfire. Alexander starts to feel a little warm. The bottom of the cage is getting uncomfortably hot. This cage is really hot. Fire in the cage! Alexander pulls out Beauty's old slave clothes, desperate to beat out the flames. The flame is extinguished, but the clothes themselves burn to cinders. Alexander won't be able to keep the cage from igniting for long. The heat and movement must have jarred something. Something that Alexander's carrying is starting to jiggle around. Egad! Something's really percolating! The water in Alexander's lamp is hot. It's just about... boiling! Alexander feels a drop. It starts to rain. That man is a powerful nature wizard. By the sacred oak, let him down! I must apologize for our rude welcoming committee. 
We've been feeling inhospitable ever since the winged ones stole our sacred miniature oak tree. Besides, Wazir Al-Hazred sent a message that we were to watch out for a highly dangerous foreign assassin. I assume you are the one he meant. I'm sure I'm precisely who he meant. I assure you, I mean to harm no one, unless that person threatens the princess. I'm sorry to have disrupted your ceremony, but I'm running out of time. What is it that you seek? The Oracle on the Isle of the Sacred Mountain told me I should speak to you about the Realm of the Dead. She told me of two souls in unrest there that I might be able to free. Free souls in the Realm of the Dead? You're mad! The souls might be able to help me on my mission to save the princess. It's imperative that I do everything I can. The risks are not important. No? And yet getting yourself killed will hardly help the princess. But I will tell you what I know. Legend has it that it is the right of any human to challenge the Lord of the Dead in order to save his own life or the life of another already past. But the knowledge of how to do this was lost centuries ago. I have only heard of one who tried it, a young knight who came to the land of the Green Isles from a distant land long ago. According to the story, he was determined to challenge the Lord of the Dead for the soul of his dead lover. It is said that he tamed the Lord of the Dead's horse, a black-winged, demon-hearted beast named Nightmare. Nightmare sometimes flies to the human world to feed on certain noxious plants. Those unfortunate enough to see her are glad to escape with their very souls intact. Somehow the knight captured Nightmare and rode off on her back, supposedly to the realm of the dead. But neither the knight nor his lover ever returned. If there was a means for challenge, it was lost with the night. I see. Can you tell me anything about the Lord of the Dead? Ah, that is a blacker matter still. To the Druids, he is Samhain, Lord of coldness and despair. Samhain was once a man like you or I, but he insulted the gods and was sentenced to rule the underworld. Immortal he is and mateless, robbed of sleep, robbed of movement, robbed of companionship. It is said that he hates all mortals even more for the mortality that he lost. That is all I know. Interesting. I shall remember. Now look how the oak embers of our bonfire still glow hot despite the rain. If you're bent on your course, you'll need courage that's just as impervious to the chill. <sighs> May your luck last longer than your storm, brave one. May it indeed. Thank you, Archdruid. Alexander scoops up some of the red-hot embers in the ancient human skull.